we got to see in the last video, we were able to really, really speed up our recovery process by doing away with the manifold gauge set, doing away with the low loss fittings, and simply putting a T on the input side of our recovery machine. Then we took two hoses straight to that T, and then we were able to take the Schrader cores out, which sped that process up even more. So we got full flow all the way to our recovery machine. Then we used a larger hose going to our recovery tank and we turned the recovery tank upside down so that way we're putting liquid straight into the bottom and we don't have the restriction of that dip tube going in there. So that's able to really speed this process up. A lot of people overlook the importance of that larger hose and the importance of having no restrictions on the high side. That really slows it down. And we were able to speed a recovery up significantly. Also, we were able to pull the liquid refrigerant out first and it made that go a lot faster. Now, are there things we can do to speed it up even more? I'm glad you asked, and the answer is yes! We can absolutely do more stuff, and there's several things we can do. The first one I wanna point out to you is to make sure that we use larger hoses. Just like I use this large hose going into my recovery tank, I wanna get two more of those hoses and putting them where they're coming from the unit to the recovery machine. Short, thick, fat hoses. The distance of that hose needs to be as short as possible that you can still work with, and also a large diameter. So this way we can pull straight from both sides to our recovery machine. Now I have more of those big hoses, but I save them for vacuum. I never wanna use the same hose I'm using for recovery as I use for vacuum, because the oil will get impregnated into that hose and take a lot longer to do vacuum, which we're gonna be doing later on. So thick hoses here, no straighter ports, Putting a T here and doing away with that manifold gauge set was a huge difference. That big hose here, inverting the tank made a huge difference, but we can still speed it up more. One of the issues we have is as we're putting that refrigerant into this tank, we're filling up that volume and we're putting that refrigerant in and making it condense into that liquid. So the temperature of this tank is just going up and up and up. We're putting more molecules of refrigerant in here. So as there's more and more molecules, those molecules are moving faster and faster, the temperature of the tank goes up and so does the pressure. And as the pressure of the tank goes up, we have more compression ratio against this pump right here. So as our compression ratio gets higher and higher apart, it's more work in the pump and it takes longer and longer. So are there ways we could speed that up? Sure, we can reduce the compression ratio in the pump and we can do that by reducing the temperature of our tank. So there's several ways we can do that. The most popular way, our good friend, the bucket. What we can do with this bucket is fill it up with ice water. And from there, I can take my recovery tank and dump it inside this ice water. By doing that, we're gonna have heat transfer and the ice will melt. We're gonna transfer the heat from the tank to the ice and we're cooling the tank off, dropping also the pressure. So we're pumping up against lower pressure and it speeds the recovery up. Now there's a few important things I wanna discuss about this method. One of the issues is once we use that water and on our scale, it's gonna be an issue. So we're pretty much having to remove the scale from the scenario and then we don't really know how much refrigerant we're putting in our tank or if we're close to overfilling it. So that is a warning. Now, another thing about that is when we take this tank and we drop it inside of this bucket, we'll see that the volume of this tank takes up almost the entire volume of the bucket. So if you were to fill this bucket up and you were to drop this tank inside of this bucket, most of the water would come out. There's only about this much water all the way around the tank. So ultimately you end up with very little water. So your next option is continuously put ice in it or continuously have water running on it, which then you're working around the wet environment and you're having to keep your scale away and there's lots and lots of variables and complications. So while this is a method that works, is there a better method? Absolutely. One of the methods is they sell this product called a molecular transformator. All it really is is a subcooling device. By hooking this up in series, in other words, the hose goes into this device, out of this device, and then into our tank, we're able to use this heat transfer method to subcool the refrigerant, drop the temperature of the refrigerant, which also drops the pressure in our tank, and it's able to speed up our recovery process. Just to show you how that's gonna work, we could take a little device and we hook our hose going into this device. So we have the other hose going out of this device. And then it would go into our recovery tank. So this is what we call in series, into this device, out of this device, into a recovery tank. From there, we have our bucket full of ice water. And notice how small this is. Once we drop this into our bucket of ice water, there's a lot more surface area to deal with. So there's a lot of ice that can melt, a lot of liquid touching this device. So we're able to cool the refrigerant off without having to put the whole tank in. By doing it this way, I can also leave my tank on the scale without having to worry about water getting on it or, or changing the weight of my scale or all those other issues. So it's a great way of speeding that process up.
Now, a company came up with this device, and it's a great option, but it's not your only option. All it really is is quarter-inch tubing. So here I've taken some quarter-inch tubing and just made a nice little circle out of it. This is copper that we pulled out from another ductless job. And what I would do is do two or three of these and braze them together. And then what you want to do is separate them, pull them out. Here are the metals touching each other, and I don't want that to happen. I want it spread out a little bit more. So there's more of the liquid, more of the cooler water touching more of the copper. So we have better heat transfer. But what's even a better option than that is what if we increase the size of this? Here we have this quarter inch tubing, but that's going to be a restriction from our pump, and we want to remove all the restrictions we possibly can. So what I prefer to use is a 3 8 copper. So here I just took 3 8 copper we pulled from another job, and I took an old suction line accumulator, and I just simply wrapped that copper around that suction line accumulator, rolled it up, made this nice little barrel, and all I have to do is add a little bit more to it, and, then, and I can braze onto these connections little service valves. I can put the service port, braze it right in here and here, and then I can attach my hose here, here, and still be able to drop it right in the bucket. This is much, much cheaper than buying that, but whichever you prefer. By doing it this way, we're able to drop the temperature and also drop the pressure of the recovery tank. By having less pressure we're pumping against, it's able to speed up our process. And there's many, many different methods. The downside to using this is once you get done, you have a significant amount of liquid refrigerant in these connections and also your hoses. So what I'll find to do is put an extra valve right here. So when I'm done, I can then put this on my recovery machine and recover that last little bit out, which sounds like a whole lot of steps, but simply I wanna recover all the liquid refrigerant that's in here and it doesn't take very long for that. And we can let that happen while we're doing the rest of our work. But that's only one half of the system. We still have the other half to talk about. Now remember when we were pulling all that refrigerant out, the liquid refrigerant came out pretty fast, but then the vapor took a lot longer. What's happening is the temperature and pressure of our tank's going up and our compression ratio is going up. So we already have a solve for that. But the other side, our pressure is dropping on this side, which is what we want. We want to be able to drop the pressure by getting all the refrigerant molecules. But that liquid refrigerant's boiling from a liquid to vapor inside of a compressor in that oil. And if you saw that compressor started to freeze in all those other scenarios. So what we want to do is think of a way that we can keep the pressure up for as long as possible to speed up a recovery process. And we have multiple options. One of the options, I like to turn the fan on in my air handler. So I'm taking a heat from the house and moving that heat across this evaporator coil. Then we're still having heat transfer. By keeping that evaporator coil as warm as possible, we keep the pressure up inside of this evaporator coil, which keeps the pressure up on our suction side, which helps speed up a recovery process. So yeah, leaving the fan run inside helps. We can also put a heating blanket or something like that on there, but this really isn't our restriction. Our restriction is really going to be at the compressor where we have the oil. So what can we do to solve that? We have lots of options. One of the options we can do is turn on the crankcase heater. So all I have to do is leave it energized, and the crankcase heater is going to keep the oil warm. And by keeping the oil warm, it's going to make the refrigerant boil out of the oil a whole lot faster. And it's also going to raise the temperature and the pressure inside the system so our recovery machine can pull it out very, very quickly. Instead of waiting for it to be all the way into a vacuum and having to slowly pull that refrigerant out of the oil, we can then make that speed up by making that refrigerant boil much faster. But a lot of equipment doesn't come with a crankcase heater or maybe you've already disconnected your wiring. So there's other options. Remember a good old tank heater from a previous video? This is a great option. We can wrap this around the bottom of the compressor. We can plug this in and what it's gonna do is start heating up the crankcase section of the compressor. So by having this around the bottom, we're able to warm the compressor up, raising the pressure, boiling the refrigerant out of the oil a whole lot faster. There are some other options. You can use a heat gun, but the problem with the heat gun is notice all the leaves inside of this unit. So we'd have to first make sure all those leaves are out of the way because that heat gun could very quickly set those leaves on fire or also maybe there's leaves under the unit or around the unit and that could cause a fire that could spread very, very quickly. And again, never use a torch because that's a whole other issue of safety, but especially with the fire hazard. So using a heater blanket like this, using a crankcase heater or a heat gun after removing all the fire hazards and leaves, having the fan motor run inside helps speed up that recovery process. It makes it all go much, much faster. Anytime we do recovery with any kind of a chiller system where we're taking heat out of water on the inside, or we have a water-cooled condenser, any of these options dealing with water, cooling water, glycol, any of the above, we want to make sure the water is moving. So if there's pumps, we want to make sure the pumps are on. We want to keep that water flowing and keep that water moving. What's going to happen is we recover that refrigerant very quickly. The temperature and pressure drops. The refrigerant starts boiling, changing state from liquid to vapor, which means it's absorbing heat. And the temperature and pressure is going to start to drop. 
And if we have water around, that water will freeze and it could damage our pipes very easily and very quickly. So by keeping the water moving, there's a large quantity of water and that quick moving water is going to prevent that water from freezing or at least reduce the risk of it freezing. So as we're recovering refrigerant, we don't have to worry about any of those pipes breaking in the future. So again, we wanna keep the temperature of our system as high as possible for as long as possible. We wanna keep the temperature of the refrigerant going into our tank as low as possible. That way we reduce the compression ratio to make our pump more efficient. Also we wanna use largest, shortest hose possible, especially in the high side going in. Make sure we have this in liquid form. Make sure we go in as a liquid through that vapor side that speeds it up without the restriction of the straw. Do away with our Schrader cores, do away with our manifold gate set, two large hoses straight to the input side. Now we've reduced all those restrictions, kept our compression ratio low, and by doing all that, we've reduced our recovery time even more. So the last video was seven minutes. We could probably drop that down to say five minutes. Hopefully it gives you an idea how we can speed up that recovery process. Nobody likes to do recovery, but it's required as a part of our job. So by knowing these little tricks, we're able to speed up that recovery time, saving you time, saving you money, and still be able to do the job the right legal way. All these little things go a long ways, and stay tuned, we'll talk about some more methods we can do in this as well.